let's go live to uh, geopolitical analyst William Engdahl and author of Full Spectrum Dominance. Uh, thanks very much for coming on to the programme again. Um, what steps do you think Kiev could be referring to, do you think? The uh, steps in, in regard to what exactly? They've backtracked uh, on their earlier clear. statement of a, of a ceasefire, saying that they're now putting forward steps for a possible truce. Well, it's, it's very unclear at this point. I think there's a, a deep split, a cleft between Poroshenko's faction and uh, Yatsenyuk, who is the uh, uh, golden boy of, of uh, Victoria Nuland, the State Department neoconservatives in Washington. And uh, I think the, the more the situation uh, in East Ukraine develops into a catastrophe for the uh, demoralized Ukrainian army forces that are trying to, uh, uh, to destroy the place, ethnic cleanse it, uh, the more that that happens, that they aren't successful, uh, the more that split between Poroshenko and Yatsenyuk, the prime minister, is, is going to manifest itself and how that plays out is very unclear at this point. I don't, I don't hold much uh, weight uh, by any of the steps that Yatsenyuk, when he's talking about uh, full NATO membership for Ukraine, something that's uh, akin to lunacy in my book. Why is there this big division, do you think, in the Ukrainian government? Well, I think it's, it's uh, the fault lines run, run on different interest factions. Poroshenko's business interests lie very much in eastern Ukraine. And the agenda of the Pravi sector, the interior minister, and certainly of the neoconservative hawks in Washington is to create a, and, and this is the only interpretation possible since, since March of this year, to create such a destruction in the eastern Ukraine as to destroy the economic relationship between Russia and especially Germany, but Russia and the European Union. And that is the major goal. I think the other thing is that the very powerful uh, interest, the, the, uh, the vested interest behind the U.S. military industrial complex, behind the Wall Street banks, see this as the only way to save the dollar system from, from complete collapse and the uh, diminution of American hegemony, American power globally, because uh, this, is, this is a, uh, a do-or-die, life-and-death thing for this, this Western elite in Washington and also in London around Cameron. So do, do you it's think, a, it's William, a, can I just, we're just running out of time, just one last question. Sure. Do you think that the West's opinion could be influenced at all by the fact that the OSCE is going to see for itself the destruction in the Donbass region? Do you think what they'll say after seeing that firsthand could change opinion at all? I would hope so, because the, the pictures that I've seen are just uh, devastating. It's, it's human destruction uh, of an unimaginable scale. Uh, the Nazis during World War II uh, didn't uh, achieve anything uh, more complete than what I've seen from the Kiev uh, Ukrainian destruction of East Ukraine. Uh, I don't think, however, the propaganda machine driving this from NATO, from, from Washington, is such that uh, reality doesn't intrude on their, on their propaganda. It's just a, a, a pilotless drone of, of lies and, and uh, deceptions that is coming from Washington, coming from London. And, and uh, uh, we need some voices of sanity and reason. They are beginning to come out in Mearsheimer's article in Foreign Affairs, in the retired intelligence officer's open letter to Merkel from Washington. Uh, these are signs Merkel is being lied to uh, on faulty intelligence, fake photos and so forth that are being presented by Kiev, by Yatsenyuk's government uh, to justify uh, severe NATO sanctions. And this is, this is stepwise a move toward World War III and certainly toward a new Cold War. And that Europe certainly doesn't need. The world doesn't need it. OK, thank you, William. Thanks for your thoughts on this. That's uh, William Engdahl, a geopolitical analyst. Thank you.